Thank you for joining us at Hope Lutheran Church for worship online again this week, no matter where you're watching. When you're watching, I am just happy that you are joining us. Pastor Carl, are you getting ready for Christmas? Getting ready. I tried you the second Sunday in Advent. I knew it. Holy I can't moly. believe it. <laughs> How about your Christmas shopping? You done? I haven't even started yet. I'm in trouble. <laughs> we're almost finished, so we're in good shape. Yes, I can't start too early, otherwise my boys find them, and then it all goes down. So I have I, to I wait. I remember those days when we used to shake the package and take a peek. Exactly right, and find the coal in your stocking, right? Mm, yeah, right, <laughs> right. Yes, well we're having some great things in the planning process right now for Christmas. For example, we are going to have a community Christmas event. It's going to be outdoors in our patio area on Christmas Eve. We'll have two sessions, one at six and one at seven, where we'll get to sing our Christmas carols, we'll have hot cocoa, and we'll hear the story of Jesus' birth. But as everything in a time of a pandemic, that all could go away tomorrow. So we never know. We want you to be safe, and uh, we're going to ask you to wear masks and be socially distanced. So we're going to make it as safe as we can as long as we're allowed to do it. And so that means that you need to tune in every week to see what's happening. That's right. You're going to have to stay connected and go to hopepd.org. Mm -hmm. And also, Pastor Carl, I saw you arranging angels. Yes, uh, there's a few angels left on the angel tree for the, the needy kids within our valley. So if you haven't come by the church to pick one up, now is the time to do it. But they are going fast. So thank yes. you to those of you who've already picked up angels. And thank you for those of you who will. Because you're going to make a Chris, uh, kids Christmas mm -hmm. day even better. So that's sharing Jesus' love. Yeah. So should we worship together? Let's do it. All right. We are gathered in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now let us confess our sins in the presence of God. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister in the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us light our Advent wreath. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for this circle of light that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the candles on this wreath, kindle within us the fire of your spirit, that we may be light shining in the darkness. Enlighten us with your grace, that we may welcome others as you have welcomed us. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. Amen. Now please join us in our opening hymn. O oh, come, O oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God Stay. 
Teach us your will and guide our way. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you. Today's reading from Mark does not begin with the story of Jesus' birth, but with the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. The good news for the second Sunday in Advent comes from the book of Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people, people from the whole of Jerusalem countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to hear him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The good news of our Lord Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and his only Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Did you ever stop to wonder what life was like for Jesus as a child? The Bible has almost nothing to say about Jesus between the visit of the wise men when he was very young and Jesus' visit to the temple when he was 12 years old. That 10-year period is blank, except for a brief statement found in Luke chapter 2, that Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and divine and human favor. Our, fa our favorite story of Jesus' childhood comes from Luke's gospel. Luke is the one who tells us about the angel appearing to Mary and the baby Jesus and the stable and the manger and the shepherds. Luke's gospel is clearly the hand-down hand favorite when it comes to the story of Jesus' birth. We also know that Jesus' earthly father was a carpenter, so we assume that Joseph trained Jesus to be a carpenter too. We also know that John, John who would later be known as John the Baptist, was six months older than Jesus and a relative of Jesus, probably a cousin. We know that Mary and Elizabeth, John's mother, were close. I like to think that as John and Jesus were growing up, they often played together. I like to think of John and Jesus growing up as best friends. They were certainly best friends once they, they were growing. In Luke, the stories of John and Jesus are, are intertwined. John first, because he was the firstborn. The angel appeared first to John's father, Zachariah, and then appeared to Mary. First John was born to Elizabeth, and then Jesus was born to Mary. That's the way Luke tells the story, our favorite among the four Gospels. Matthew in his Gospel starts with the genealogy, tracing Jesus' ancestry from Abraham through David to Joseph, the husband of Mary. The Gospel of John, not written by John the Baptist, but by another John, starts very differently. John was a theologian and a poet, so he starts telling about Jesus by saying, in the beginning, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. But Mark, in our Gospel lesson for today, starts his story of Jesus by saying, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Mark packs a lot into that short sentence. He tells us that Jesus is good news. He tells us that Jesus is the Christ, by which he means the Messiah. 
And then he said that Jesus is the Son of God, just in case we miss the point. Then Mark tells us that God sent John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin, as a messenger to prepare the way for Jesus. John was the, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, preparing the way of the Lord, making his path straight. Mark says that, that John set up his pulpit in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As far as most of the Jews were concerned, that was all wrong. For them, for them, baptism was for Gentiles who wanted to become Jews. Jews baptized Gentiles into the Jewish faith, but they didn't baptize other Jews. But John was calling Jews to repent of their sins and to be baptized for the forgiveness of their sins. Why would Jews need to be baptized? They were already the people of God. But John was saying, yes, yes, you are the people of God, but you are also sinners. You need to repent. You need to be baptized. You need to have your sins forgiven. That was the sermon that John was preaching in the wilderness, in the desert, in the middle of nowhere. You might ask the question, why the wilderness? Well, the wilderness had a special meaning, meaning for the Jewish people. Their ancestors had wandered for 40 years in the wilderness. That's where they became a nation, in the wilderness. That's where God sent, set his covenant with the Jewish people. So John the Baptist set up his pulpit in the wilderness and the people came. The people came in droves to hear him. They came from little towns and villages that, that dotted Israel. They also came and, and drove us from the big city of Jerusalem to hear John preach. They didn't have to do that. They had it all. Priests, Levites, Pharisees, rabbis, you name it. For the Jewish people, Jerusalem was the center of the, of the universe. Why would people of Jerusalem go out into the middle of nowhere to hear John preach? Well, let me tell you why they went. They went into the wilderness to hear John preach because he was a prophet, a great prophet. It had been centuries since Israel had heard a great prophet and the people were hungry to hear one. Prophets tell the truth. Prophets lead people in the right direction. So the people went by the thousands into the desert to hear what he had to say. Wouldn't it be wonderful to have a, a great prophet who would lead us in the right direction? Who would tell us the truth? Who would call us to repent of our sins? Who would show us the way out of the mess that we're in? But John was a real prophet, and he called people to real repentance. He called them to fess up their sins. He called them to turn around and, and face the other direction. He called them to let God set direction, the direction for their lives, even if that turned out to cost them. The people who heard John preach knew that they had found something special. They knew that John was the real deal. They knew that they could trust him. So they went back to their villages or Jerusalem and they told their friends and neighbors. And before long, it was standing room only in the desert. Everyone wanted to hear what John had to say. Everyone wanted to hear a real prophet for a change. Here's what they heard. Repent, be baptized, get your sins forgiven, let God change your life. The people loved it because they knew John was right. They came and listened, they repented and were baptized. When they went home, they were different people. John had changed their lives. Well, let me restate that a little. God had changed their lives. But John did something else as well. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I'm not worthy to, to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The one who was to come was Jesus. Now he has come. 
Like John, Jesus came calling us, calling people to repent. He calls us to repent. He calls us to be baptized for the forgiveness of our sins. Jesus has baptized us, not only with water, but with the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit. We have believed Jesus, and he has changed our lives. Let those of us who have repented continue to repent, because repentance is a lifelong project. The world is like a, a big magnet, always tempting us, pulling us away from the Jesus path. The devil specializes in our, getting our attention and tempting us and tripping us up. Like a spaceship uh, to Mars, we need a million mid-course corrections to where we are going. We call those mid-course corrections repentance. Repentance is changing our direction to walk with Jesus. Repentance is our daily task. We never get over the need to repent. We never get over the need to let Jesus show us the right direction, to help us back onto the pathway. To repentance, we add forgiveness. Forgiveness is also a, another lifelong project. Every day is a new opportunity to forgive someone. Every day is another opportunity to forgive and to be forgiven. To those who have not repented, who have not been baptized, who have not received forgiveness of their sins, Jesus says, do those things now. Repent. Be baptized. Be forgiven. This is the first day of the rest of your life. Repent. Be baptized. Be forgiven. And walk each step of the rest of your life with Jesus. My friends, that's today's good news. That's what the season of Advent is all about. Repentance, forgiveness, amen. Let us pray. Lord, stir up our hearts to repair the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us in our repentance to receive your forgiveness and begin yet another new day in our life with you. Thank you for helping us make a difference with the gift of life itself. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you once again for joining us at Hope Lutheran Church for Worship Online. We are blessed that you're joining us. And we're also blessed with so many of you who've contributed uh, to the church financially during this time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't tell you how many lives you have changed just by contributing and partnering with us uh, to make a difference in our valley. And the need is still great. And so if you'd like to contribute to this ministry, there are three ways you can do so. You can give, a, you can send in a donation to Hope Lutheran Church at 45900 Portola Avenue in Palm Desert, California, 92260. You can also text to give simply by texting 84321 and following the directions. 
And then you can also give online at hopepd.org. Not only will you find ways to contribute, but you're going to find all of our different ministry opportunities and what we're doing at Hope to help other people. So go to hopepd.org today and also like and subscribe to this YouTube channel to help us reach more people with the good news of Jesus Christ. So let us continue with our worship as we confess our faith found in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of power and might, comfort your people and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone who is in need. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience. Sustain and support us in our doubts and questions. Nurture our faith as we discern and enact your mission. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it is in need of your healing touch. Mend the wounds of environmental damage and restore balance to ecosystems so that all creation can declare your praise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. Where people suffer from discrimination, judgment, and injustice, speak words of truth and comfort. Lead us toward a world where faithfulness will sprout underfoot and righteousness rain down from above. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Leading God, you ask us to make uneven ground smooth. Make even the disparities between your people Make them even. Sustain and support people with physical and intellectual disabilities. Accompany disability advocates who work for a world accessible to all. Teach us to celebrate the great diversity in our midst. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. We pray for those in our families and congregation who are not joyful in this holiday season. Comfort those who grieve. Be a companion to all who are lonely. Tend those who are sick. Especially this day, we pray for Keith Scharf and Sandy Friedel. We pray that you also be with those suffering from coronavirus and gather all people in your healing embrace. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O oh God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As we are gathered into one, let us praise our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ, given for you. The blood of Christ, shed for you. Now may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Once again, thank you for joining us. And if you'd like and subscribe to this YouTube channel, it will help us reach more people. And also head to hopepd.org to hear about our community Christmas event and our angel tree. So now receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant to you his everlasting peace. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.